What's going on guys? Today we're converting this completely stock Kyosho Phaser into this, the General Lee. So let's go! What's going on guys? I don't know if you saw my introduction video where I laid out this as well as three other Dodge Charger bodies, all of which I'm going to convert into General Lees. If you haven't seen that video, watch that one first. It gives you a nice overview of some of the things you're going to need to do to all of the cars in order to convert them to the General Lee. This is the first in a series of four videos where I convert each one of them and show you exactly step by step what it's going to take to make that particular car into a General Lee. This is going to be the first one, mainly because I think it's one of the easiest and will probably be one of the most popular as well. And the first change I'm going to make is to replace this 70 Charger front end with one that looks more like this, which is more correct for a 69. As I mentioned in that intro video, that was really one of the main areas that held me back from getting this car until I was sure that I could do something to make it like a 69. And frankly, I'm doing that step first because I don't want to go through all of the other steps if I make a mistake here. So let's get started by getting this front grille off of this body. And that's easily accomplished by just removing the two screws that hold it in from the back. So right away you can see, once we take this off, we have a pretty nice flat area to work with. And to be honest, you could throw a decal into here and I think it would already be a big improvement. But I want to take it a step further. As I mentioned before, one of the things that I wanted to do was add a 3D printed insert. And this is one of my early versions of that that I painted up just to kind of get a feel for how realistic it's going to look. And even just holding it here, I think it really starts to make this car look a lot more correct. But obviously that's not going to work. We need to make it fit in here. And to do that, we're going to need to cut out the front of this area so that we can set this piece in from behind. This piece here is a rough draft of what I'm hoping is going to be my final version. It's a little bit different than that one. I've got the angles changed so that it can fit here and I've got a little bit bigger lip around the edges of it so that there's an area to glue to from behind. And what I did was also printed not only that big lip, which you see right here, but I also printed the piece that's going to stick out, which is this piece here. And these will be available within the STL file so that you can do the same. And the reason I did this is because you want to make sure that you've really got this positioned in just the right spot so that you can mark and make your cuts accurately. If we set this piece right into here, it gives us the opportunity to really get it centered and figure out exactly where we want it. Being particular with the height and of course making sure that we're centered side to side. Once you use that as a guide, you can take this larger one and kind of put that over where that other one would be. Again, making sure you're centered, but, but making sure that you've also got your height where you need. And what I'm going to do is tape this into position, and then I'm going to use a marker to mark where we need to cut the Lexan. So let's get that done now. So one thing I forgot to mention before I got started is that I would strongly recommend that you put a piece of tape here first so that you can mark onto the tape. One, because it's hard to get the marker to stick to the Lexan, but also, more importantly, it gives you the opportunity to make a mistake and start over. This wasn't my first try, and I'm glad that I did it this way with the tape, because I didn't have a mess to clean in order to redo it. On my first attempt, after I marked it out with the pen, I took the template away, and I could tell that it wasn't centered properly. And I was able to just pull off the tape, put on a new piece of tape, and do it again. Just to review the process, I started with this little template piece just to kind of get a feel for where I wanted the height to be. Obviously centered is centered. But in terms of the height, I wanted to have it positioned in just such a way that I had the right amount of reveal all the way around. And keep in mind also that this grill, as well as the corresponding template pieces 
does have a top and a bottom and you want to make sure you get that right. The bottom is straight across. The top comes to a little bit of a peak in the middle. So this, this part here is a little bit higher than the sides and that's how you know which way is up. And be very conscious of that so that you make sure you get the template in the right way. Once I was kind of happy with my overall positioning, this is the outer template piece and you can see that I used the tape to tape it into place very carefully and then make my mark with a pen. And like I said, make sure you use the tape because if you make a mistake or you're not totally happy with it, you want to be able to redo it. So now that we've got this, the next step is to cut the Lexan. This is the make or break moment. So you want to make sure that you take your time with this, maybe cut it a little bit small and consider sanding or filing your way up to the final size. So I'm going to do that and come back, hopefully with a well-cut body. All right, so now we're back. And as you can see, there's a big hole in the front end. And overall, the process went really well. What I ended up doing was using the Lexan scissors and cutting really close to the line, but not quite up to it. And then I used various Dremel attachments to sand my way to my final line. So overall, I'm really happy with how it came out. My lines are nice and sharp and nice and crisp, which is what I was really hoping for. I had originally tried to use a razor blade with a straight edge in order to make them perfectly straight, but that just wasn't happening. This body is relatively thick as far as Lexan bodies go, and I was using a lot of force, and I was just at a point where I felt like if I used any more force, I was going to slip and either damage the car or myself. So I ended up switching to the scissors and I'm really glad that I did because once I switched it went nice and quickly and then I was just able to clean it up pretty easily with the sanding attachments on my Dremel. And like I said, it's really important here that you really sneak up on that measurement. Just cut to the inside of the line or even leave a hair more with those scissors because you don't want it too big. And you really want to have it just a hair small so that you can do your final fitment with the actual piece itself instead of the template. Speaking of the piece itself, I've got the piece here. This is just a rough draft copy. You can still see the printing lines because I printed it at such a, such a high layer height. Uh, but I painted it up just to kind of get an idea of how it's going to look once it's installed. And I want to put it in. Now at this point, you can see I've got tape on the back of it. I'm just taping it into place because it's got to go in and out a couple more times. So let's get this installed. I can't wait to see how it looks. So now it's all taped in temporarily and I'm just thrilled with how it looks. I really think this is starting to make it look like it should, like a 69 charger. And I've only got it taped in because this isn't my final print. I've still got one or two tweaks that I want to make to it. And my final one, I'm going to print at a higher resolution so that it looks a little bit better. And I want to be able to take it back out so that while I'm doing all of my other work to the car, nothing happens to it or it doesn't get dirty or damaged. So now it's time to start working on the bumper. And at least for this car, what I want to do is actually utilize some of this Chrome 70 grill as the bumper. And I'm going to work on cutting it out right down here and right along to the sides so that it's more of a bumper instead of an entire front grill assembly. And I'm really hoping that this is going to give me a good result. It may not be technically perfect because the bumper's not going to wrap around the fender as far as I'd like it to, but it's already here. It's the right shape. It, it's just, I think it's already chrome. I think this is going to be the best way to go. On the other bodies, I'm not necessarily going to have that option because I only have this one. So I'm going to have to still end up likely printing bumpers for those cars but this is just going to be a whole lot less work i can keep the chrome i just think it's going to be the way to go even if it's not quite as technically accurate as the bumper may end up looking so that's going to be the next project we're going to start cutting on this and i'm going to show exactly where to cut so that it gives you the best result possible so let's get going on that so now i've got this front grill assembly taped up or at least the bottom half that i want to preserve and the plan here is to cut right along this crease and then extend that cut through the outsides. And the crease is pretty easy to see under the tape, but for over here, I just kind of gave myself some guidelines with a Sharpie. 
So now we're going to use a cutoff wheel and obviously I'm going to try to stay away from where I want to end up and kind of work my way down to it. So let's get it cut. So this might be a little bit hard to see on camera. Hopefully in the close up it'll be a little bit more obvious. But once you get the bulk of this cut away, if you turn it, you can see now that there's a black area from where there was no chrome due to the shape of the, the piece. Now what I want to do is trim all that black away so that this bumper becomes more shallow and doesn't extend back toward the grill. So I'm going to tape this off again to protect the chrome area and then trim up to that chrome line. So now that I'm all done with my fitment and I'm happy with how everything went together, the only thing left to do with the front end was to permanently glue in the final 3D printed piece. You can see that this piece here looks a lot like the other one, but it's printed at higher resolution and I took the time to sand it, to use putty, smooth it out real nice, and then paint it. And I'm real happy with how that final piece came out. In order to ensure that it was glued in properly and in the right place, all along that lip that I printed on the outside of the piece that sits behind the Lexan, I used medium CA glue and I stuck it in from behind and held it until that glue dried. Once that glue was dry, I smeared a lot of shoe goo on the inside to really hold it into place. And now the only step left is to use these brackets that I've printed separately and fit them right in there just for extra support. Now we can move on to the push bar. And there's two different components to this. There's the push bar itself, and then there's the mount that attaches it to the vehicle. Each different chassis that I use is going to require its own type of mount. And that was another reason why I wanted this to be more modular, because that way I don't have to design and build the push bar four separate times. So first, let's look at the mount that I built for the Kyosho Phaser chassis. What I did was start with a single piece of Kydex, about an eighth of an inch thick, and I started with a piece that's about three inches wide and more or less any length as long as it's at least three inches long. And what I did was utilize the existing holes that hold this front bumper mount to the front of the vehicle. And I used that as a template, transferred the holes to the piece of Kydex, then I trimmed the Kydex down to make it roughly the same shape. Once the holes were drilled, I countersunk those holes and I got myself a set of countersunk M3 screws of about 20 millimeters in length. Those are longer than the original screws and that way there's more material holding this together. As you can see, I've got two bends in this piece of Kydex. And bending Kydex is really easy as long as you have a heat gun and something to clamp this in that you can use as almost a bending brake. If you're not familiar with using Kydex, make sure you watch my other videos where I've made other RC parts with it. I take you through step by step and show you exactly that procedure of heating and bending and you can get an idea of just how easy it is. But anyway, what I did with this piece was just to put two bends in it and ultimately the bend angle is not real important as long as your two final pieces are exactly 90 degrees apart. In this case, I wanted to keep it back enough so that depending on my push bar design, I could always shim it up with some washers to get just the amount of protrusion that I want. And this surface right here is where we're going to ultimately be mounting the push bar to. As you can see, this piece is super strong and it's going to provide a lot of impact resistance. And for a vehicle that's going to be jumped, that's really important. So this is our Kydex mount. Now it's time to move on with the push bar itself. So now what you can see here is that we've got the entire push bar assembly assembled. We've got the Kydex piece that I bent up and attached to the bottom of the chassis. And then attached to that Kydex mount is my 3D printed push bar. Now the reason that I did this in multiple pieces was really just to make it more modular. I've got four of these cars that I'm building and this allows me to use the same or very similar push bar design on every car. Additionally, it provides the option to mix things up a little bit, both for myself and anyone that ends up going with my design. And what I mean by that is that I want to be able to interchange push bars. 
this is going to be a benefit, especially for people who just stick with the 3D printed bar. You're going to break it if you jump the car. And this gives you a quick and easy option to print another one and bolt it on. It also gives the option to make one out of more robust materials, which is what I'm also doing. What I did with this was in addition to printing this design, I also made a printable template of this shape. That's what you see here. I've extended it a little bit and what I used it for was to transfer this shape onto a couple of pieces of Kydex. You can see that right now I've got them all taped together and I did that not only to get the right profile, but to be able to drill the holes that I'm going to use to hold the cross pieces to the bar. And for those what I'm using is this carbon fiber rod. I think I bought this a few years ago from Hobby King. It's designed for building custom drones and so forth. And the diameter is just about 5.7 millimeters, which is just under a quarter of an inch. Super light, super strong, and exactly the size I wanted. What I'm doing to attach this is using these small 3D printed inserts that I've also got in my design. These will slide right into here and there's a hole on each end that I can screw an M2 countersunk screw into. So now what I've got left to do is to separate these Kydex pieces that are taped to my template and use heat to bend the bottom tab over, which will give me a surface to mount to the piece that's already on the car. I've got to countersink these screw holes and then use those M2 screws to screw it all together. And this should end up proving to be a much more durable and robust option compared to the 3D printed option. Now in the issue of full disclosure, I did make one big mistake with this. I added these mounting holes to the template and I drilled them into the Kydex. Then it dawned on me, once I heat this and bend the tab over to mount to this chassis piece, the holes may not be in the right place. I've already got holes here that I made from the 3D printed design. So I may need to remake these if my holes are too far off. I'm hoping that I can just slot them. If not, I guess I get to make another set. So if you guys decide to follow my design, don't drill these bottom two holes in your Kydex. Get the Kydex bent over, get the bar made, then fit the bar to the chassis piece and use the existing holes in the chassis piece to find the right positions here. Anyway, I'm going to move forward with this and I'm going to get this mounted to the car and I'll be back in a few. So there's the front end. Overall, I'm super happy with how this came out. The only steps that I have left now to do are to get that bumper permanently attached. And I want to update the 3D file for the push bar just to make it a little bit more robust for people that are going to print it and use it. So now we can turn our attention to the rear of the car. And overall, the rear of this car already looks really good. I really don't feel like you need to do a whole lot, if anything, to the back of the car, other than to make a couple of minor updates, which is what I'm planning. If you compare this to the rear end of a real 69 Charger, you can see a few differences. The biggest difference is obviously the blacked out tail panel, but that's a really easy fix here. The other differences are a little bit more subtle and may or may not matter to whoever does their own General Lee. The first being the chrome trim on this rear, as nice as it looks, is just way too big. It doesn't really scale properly and it kind of takes up the whole rear end. The other part of that is that it goes all the way across and not just around the individual taillights. We can fix that fairly easily by blacking out the middle, although you're still going to have the raised texture there. So it's not going to be perfect, but I think it'll be good enough. In order to help make that chrome look a little bit thinner, what we can do, if you look at an actual 69 taillight, that bottom area of what's chrome trim on here is actually a reflector or a red lens on the real taillight. And the other sides that are sunken in are black. So we can duplicate that here and it'll cut the thickness of that chrome down at least in half. Still going to be too much chrome, but I think it'll be a big improvement. The other difference I've noticed between the real 69 Charger rear ends 
and this one is that there's the chrome band all the way around that inset black area and there's just no provision for that here. I don't know yet if I'm going to try to, to maybe come up with a 3D printed option for that or if that's too small of a detail to really get hung up over. I'm going to do the rest and see how it looks and then we'll decide. So let's get going on that. So while we've got the rear portion of the body apart so that we can do that paint work, it's a perfect opportunity to get rid of this black stripe. But what we do want to keep is the portion of the decal where we've got the side marker. So I'm going to use an X-Acto knife and cut that out carefully so that that side marker stays but the rest of the decal comes off. So now you can see we've got the back all done and I think it really made a big difference on the back of the car. It really looks more like a 69 now. The chrome is still wide, but nowhere near as wide as it used to be. I think it also gives the taillights a little bit more depth. I'm just really happy with how it looks. While I had it apart, I also took the liberty of painting the screw heads with the Competition Orange Duratrax Lexan body paint. And it looks like it's a perfect color match. You can see that we've got the decal off and now I think the back is just looking great. We're in the home stretch now, so let's keep going. So now that we've got both the front end and the back end done, it really gets us past all the hard parts. From this point on, it's really smooth sailing. The next step is to apply the decals. Like I mentioned in my intro video where I identified all four cars, I've decided to go with MCI Racing decals. And Overall, I'm absolutely thrilled with how these decals look. They're crisp, they're sharp, and just about everything is sized perfectly. The only decal that I'm not thrilled with the sizing on are the checkered flag and confederate flag that go on the rear trunk. They're too small. I may replace that with a piece I print myself, but for now, we're going to go with these. Now, one thing I wanted to take you guys through was how to properly position these decals and get them on here and get them looking good. It seems like putting decals on should be pretty straightforward. And most of the time it is. One thing that I felt was really critical for these decals was ensuring that I got them in exactly the right spot. Now, when you've got smaller decals, especially when you've got a body where they can only fit in one place, putting them on there is pretty straightforward and there's a number of ways that you can do it. In this case, I took a couple of extra steps to ensure that I got it right. The first step was to cut the decals out and make sure that they're positioned properly. And I took a few steps to do that. One way to do this is to find as many pictures of correct or accurate cars as you can. I searched the internet and I found a lot of images that I felt were very helpful. For the positioning of the roof decals, I was able to find a picture of the original Lee One, General Lee, it was the one that was used the first season, at least in the first couple episodes. That had that went through a full restoration, it was well documented, and they had actually peeled the subsequent layers of paint off of the roof to expose the flag and the decals. And I was able to use that to help me position this one as accurately as possible. The way that I decided to accomplish this was to cut the decals out individually and position them exactly where I wanted to do that. And for something like the roof flag, I measured certain points on side to side to make sure that it was centered properly and it was focused a little bit more toward the hood than the rear window, just like on Lee 1. I taped it into place once I was happy and then subsequently did the same thing with the General Lee text decals. But I need to be able to remove these, peel the backing off, and then put them back in exactly the same spot. And to do that, what I used was some of this Tamiya masking tape. And I used it to make some reference positions so that once I peel these off, I can put them back in exactly the right spot. And to be able to give me a little bit of flexibility and maneuverability, what I want to do is kind of take a trick from the one-to-one -one automotive decal application trade and what they do to get these positioned properly is to spray both the, the body of the car and the back side of the decal with soapy water. Then you can position that and you can slide it around and get it exactly where you need it. 
And to do that, there's a couple of ways you can, you can go. You can use soapy water, just like I mentioned, and that's actually how I put the rear license plate onto the rear bumper. This is an idea that I got from Hemistorm. I saw him use this and I thought I'd give it a try. I'm hoping that this will work at least as good as the soapy water. And what I'm going to do again is to spray this onto the surface. I'll pull the sticky backing off of the decal, give the back side of the decal a spray with this. And then when I position it, I can use my reference markers and slide the decal until I'm happy with it. Once it's where I want it, I can start to blot it with a paper towel to soak up some of the extra water and that should help it stay in place until it dries fully. So let's get started with that. So the first thing that I want to do is take my decal and with this one in particular I did do a little bit more to it and you're not going to be able to see it here I don't think but I already trimmed out this area here and around the O except for a little bit here, a little bit here, a little bit here, and a little bit here. That way I can put the decal on and it will go on as one decal. But after it's drying on the car, I only need to make a couple of small cuts and I can pull that center piece out. Because I did notice on the rear decal, you can see where this clear section is because it's kind of a matte finish, not glossy, and it kind of stands out against the glossy body. So anyway, the first step here is going to be to peel this back. Two hours later. Now we're gonna spray get that good and wet and we're going to spray this get this good and wet now we can position the decal and get it close get it exactly where we want it and now we can just pat it with a paper towel to help get that liquid out And the beauty of doing it this way is that as that water moves out, the decal ends up exactly where you want it. You don't get any bubbles or wrinkles or any other marking. And now we have a decal where we want it. And bang, it's there. So now I'm going to use the same process for the rest of the decals and we'll see how it goes. So now that the decals are on the body, I just wanted to give you guys a couple of pointers. First of all, I think this rapid tack did work a little bit better than soapy water. If you looked at the sped up time lapse that I did, you can see that I was able to move the decals around a little bit and I could pull the decal back up and reapply it without any real problems. And you can do that with water. This was a little bit slipperier. Is it $8 slipperier? No. For what this thing cost, I think soapy water in a spray bottle is almost as good. The other pointer I wanted to give you is to make sure your surfaces are very clean before you apply the decals. You probably saw me pull this roof flag back up and that's because I had dirt underneath it and I have still got some dirt underneath it. And that was just carelessness on my part because I didn't take the time to clean that surface well before I put the sticker on. So make sure you clean it well. So now that only leaves us with one more thing to do. 
And that is to put the wheels on. Now that the wheels are on, we have ourselves a Kyosho General Lee. And I couldn't be happier with how this car came out. This car was a lot of work, mainly because of the 3D design I had to do to get that front end where I wanted it. But if you want to replicate this, I don't think it's going to be that big of a project. Really, you've already got a painted body. You've already got a chassis. The decals and the wheels are pretty straightforward. The only real work that you have to do is to print the front grille and any of the push bar parts that you want, or make the push bar, either or, make up the mount for the push bar, and do the detail work on the 3D printed parts before you install them. Overall, it's not a lot of work, and you're only talking about a few dollars beyond the cost of the car itself, which is pretty affordable in its own right. One last thing I did want to point out that I put on this vehicle and will also be included in the 3D files is the CB antenna. The bottom piece here is a 3D printed part and I just used a guitar string that I poked up through the base of the antenna, glued it in and then glued it right onto the back of the car. And I think it really gives that finishing touch to the overall look of the car. And it's even a nice realistic whip antenna. So if you're interested in making one of these, I'm going to have everything listed below, including the 3D files that I developed. Those are going to be available on Colts3D.com for about 10 bucks. That'll get you the push bar. It'll get you the template to make your own push bar. It gets you the full front grill assembly, which includes the main grill piece the backing piece so that you can paint them and install them separately, as well as the support pieces that I use to glue it into place. It'll also include the template piece that you need to mark off the Lexan and cut it out. Additionally, it will come with the antenna base. Linked below will also be the links to the 3D printable wheels. Those aren't my design, but they're a free design from Thingiverse, and they look great. So now that this car is all done, I'm really happy with the overall result. But if you enjoyed this, make sure you stick around. Like I said, I've got three more of these coming up, and each one of those will have different pros that will lend themselves to specific types of use. So it would definitely be worth it to check those out as I get those videos out too. And in order for you to know when those come, make sure you do the whole like and subscribe thing. Hit the notification bell so that you know when I post those videos. And if you want to do anything else to support the channel, I would just ask you to watch more of my videos. As much as the liking and subscribing helps, the thing that helps my channel the most is just having you guys watching the videos. So that's it for this week, guys. I'm thrilled with this. I can't wait to use it. And I also can't wait to get started on the next one. And I'll see you guys pretty soon. Thanks.